Pfizer notified, notified the federal government this morning it won't be sending any vaccine doses to Canada next week. It was previously announced there would be a reduction in supply over several weeks as Pfizer expands its European manufacturing facility, but totally cutting off supply for a week came as news to provinces. Ontario Premier Doug Ford reacted sharply to the setback. I'm not angry at the Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister. We've been working collaboratively. I, I'm just angry at the situation that other countries are getting it. And if I was in his shoes, I'm sure he is doing it, but I'd be on that phone call every single day. I'd be up that guy's yin yang so far with a firecracker, he wouldn't know what hit him from Pfizer. We got to be on these guys like a blanket. I'd be outside that guy's house. Every time he moved, I'd be saying, where's our vaccines? Other people are getting them. The European Union's getting them. Why not Canada? Supplies of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine will remain low over the following three weeks. Let's bring in the minister in charge of buying the vaccines for this country, Anita Anand. Hi, Minister. Good to see you. I do appreciate you making the time as always. No problem. Nice to be here. Minister, has Pfizer said why the shipments are completely getting cut off next week? The conversations that I have had with Pfizer, which have been multiple in number over the last number of days, uh, have revolved around ensuring that Canada's interests are at the forefront of the delivery schedule that they are managing in light of the upgrades that are being made to the plant in Perth, Belgium. I insisted on equitable treatment for Canada. I was assured that Canada would receive equitable treatment going forward, and that constant contact actually resulted in uh, Pfizer assuring us that we would receive our first quarter allocation of 4 million doses. Look, Vashi, we promised Canadians that we would give timely information, good and bad. And we have had much good news relating to vaccines, but unfortunately today uh, we are seeing an interruption. But rest assured, the deliveries are on schedule after this short interruption, and we will meet our Q1 quota. And then in Q2, we are going to see millions of doses, a total of 20 million doses from Pfizer and Moderna coming into this country. And then we will have all Canadians who wish to be inoculated having supplies in Canada to meet that number by the end of September. I take your point on all that. My questions are focused mostly on the next few weeks and what seem to be a number of dis different disruptions. When you were assured around equitable treatment by Pfizer, I just want to drill down on that because we have a statement from Pfizer saying that we will be back to the original schedule of deliveries to the European Union beginning the week of January 25th. So that supply shortage will be solved within a week. Our supply shortage will take, according to them at this point, a month. Why is there a discrepancy there? Actually, we in Canada are seeing near to normal supplies of vaccines this week. And our interruption is going to be felt the most next week. And that's not the case from Europe for Europe on my understanding. Furthermore, both Europe and Canada are going to, by the end of this quarter, be back to their regular uh, deliveries. And so we're, we are very much uh, on schedule with Pfizer apart from what we're going to be seeing next week. There's going to be ramping up over the month of February. And again, Vashi, the millions of doses are going to be coming into this country thereafter. And that's a signal, again, to the provinces and territories in terms of the need to ramp up during the second quarter of this year. I just want to go back to Europe, though, to be clear, because you're saying there is no difference between the way in which Pfizer is distributing or the supply issues that, that it announced were going to happen at its European facilities. There's no difference to the schedule for return to normal for the European Union versus Canada. Is that what you're saying? Because the statements we have from Pfizer lead us to believe otherwise. Look, I can speak for the government of Canada in terms of our procurement approach. And I can speak in terms of my conversations with Pfizer over the last number of days. They assured me that Canada would be treated equitably. They assured me that Pfizer will comply with its contractual commitment of 4 million doses for Q1, which means that we will have our predicted 6 million doses combined with Moderna for Q1. And 
And those are the items that I can speak to, Bashi. Uh, that's where I spend my time every day working to ensure that we have earlier and earlier doses in this country for Canadians, given the importance of this vaccination effort and our pursuit of the federal vaccination strategy, which stretches over a diverse number of suppliers and will make sure that all Canadians who wish to have access to a vaccine can do so prior to the end of September 2021. Should provinces or, or Canadians be concerned that Pfizer has, yes, said that they will guarantee, I take your point, the total number of doses for Q1, but the, the way in which that supply, which is important, is dispersed, it's, it's important because of the two-dose nature of the vaccine, uh, the way in which that supply is being rolled out has changed now m more than once, right? A few days ago, you were telling Canadians that the supply will be impacted uh, by a certain amount, you know, 50 percent, then it then it sort of evolves. So the first week will be 20 percent, then it'll be 80 percent lower to to work out to about 50 percent. Now we find out we're not getting anything next week. How reliable is the information, the assurances that, that you're getting from Pfizer? And, and should provinces and Canadians be worried about that? Actually, the supply chains are volatile right now, Vashi, because of the in increasing global demand for a very, very important product like vaccine, which is only being offered by a handful of suppliers. And the reliability of the delivery schedules, therefore, is somewhat volatile. As a result, what we are doing at the federal government level is definitely ensuring that we have our quarterly commitment from our suppliers. We are also speaking with them and advocating aggressively that we have earlier and earlier deliveries. And finally, we are making sure that we have delivery schedules that can be relied upon by the provinces and territories. Pfizer met with the Public Health Agency of Canada this morning, provided an updated delivery schedule. There's a very strong chain of communication there, and we will continue to press our vaccine suppliers to deliver vaccines to this country, given the urgency of the situation. Has the Prime Minister himself spoken to the CEO of Pfizer? I've been in touch with the Prime Minister regularly over the past number of days and weeks, in fact, on this and other files, and indeed spoke with him yesterday on this file. And uh, his team and my team also are in very close communication. I am, um, again, very supportive of this uh, approach that we are taking in procurement to make sure that we get doses for every single Canadian, the largest number of doses per capita of any country in the world, the largest largest vaccine portfolio of any country in the world. This is a strong approach, Vashi, and it's going to be paying dividends. Is that a no, Minister? And I'm asking because the President of the European Union uh, spoke directly with Pfizer. The Prime Minister of Israel uh, has said that he's had 17 conversations with the CEO of Pfizer. Has the Prime Minister directly spoken to the CEO or has all communication gone through you? Well, I am leading this file and I am very happy to do so on behalf of Canadians. It's in, indeed an honour, even on the most difficult of days. It is an honour for me to make sure that I can use my skills at the bargaining table to ensure that we are getting vaccines in the arms of Canadians and we will continue to do that. So again, that's a no. Is that correct? Well, I thank you for the question. As I said, the Prime Minister's office and he, in fact, directly with me are working very closely on our strategy and uh, we will continue to do so. It's because of this approach that we are taking that we are in the position as being at the forefront of vaccine procurement in the world that we're in. And certainly I'm not disputing that the procurement abilities that, that you've laid out and the portfolio that you've told us uh, often is, is very diverse and we can see through the numbers. But the, 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 I think, you know, Canadians are listening to news today that the supplies they thought were coming next week are now not coming and that Pfizer, we, are, we feel at the whim, let's say, of Pfizer. Other countries were put in a similar position and we've heard stories about the leaders of those countries picking up the phone, directly calling the CEO of Pfizer. Premier Ford today was asking the Prime Minister to do so as well. And I'm just asking whether that's happened or not. And, I, and it sounds to me like, no, it hasn't. Well, listen, there are a number of calls that are being made at the current time, and I will go back and make sure that uh, I have full information on those calls. But I want to be clear, Vashi, 
the importance is the level of fortitude and the level of aggressive uh, negotiation that Canada as a whole brings to the table. And I have been at the forefront of these procurements and have continued to advocate for Canadians and will make sure that we have vaccines in this country. That's my priority. That's my mission. And I will see it through. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time as always. Thank you so much, Vashi. Take good care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.